Did you know that Ethiopian Airlines Flight 961 is one of the very few large airliner water landings and the first hijacked water landing in history? Quite a chilling fact, isn't it? On the 3rd of December 1996, the General Directorate of Civil Aviation of the Comoros took a decisive step. Recognizing the scope and international implications of the incident, they agreed to delegate the investigation of ET-961 to the Ethiopian Civil Aviation Authority, or ECAA. This was a significant move considering the vast range of expertise and resources required to delve into such a complex case. The ECATA, backed by the Ethiopian government, was suddenly thrust into the spotlight tasked with unraveling the mystery surrounding the ill-fated flight. The ECAA would need to sift through the wreckage, piece together the sequence of events, and determine the factors that led to one of the most tragic hijackings in commercial aviation history. However, the ECAA was not alone in this daunting task. The Air Accidents Investigation Branch, or AIB, stepped in to play a crucial role. The ADAIB, known for its meticulous approach to air accident investigations, was assigned to analyze the flight recorders. These flight recorders, also known as black boxes, were critical to understanding the final moments of Flight 961. The AAIB's analysis would provide invaluable insights into the interactions between the crew, the hijackers, and the aircraft systems during the flight's terrifying final descent. Every sound, every warning alarm, every change in altitude or speed could hold the key to understanding the sequence of events that led to the crash. Together, the ECAA and the AAIB embarked on a painstaking journey to find the truth behind Ethiopian Airlines Flight 961. They knew that their findings would not only provide closure to the families of the victims, but could also inform future aviation safety measures, potentially saving countless lives. Thus, the stage was set for an intense and detailed investigation into one of the most unusual air accidents in history. The tragic accident of ET-961 claimed many lives but also had its share of survivors. This catastrophic event took its toll on the 12 crew members, all of whom were Ethiopians. Miraculously, half of them survived, including the pilot and co-pilot who guided the aircraft under unimaginable circumstances. The passengers on board hailed from a staggering 36 countries. The devastating tally of the deceased included the three hijackers who initiated the chaos. 42 of the passengers began their journey in Bombay. This group consisted of three Americans, nine Nigerians, nine Sri Lankans and 19 Indians, while the rest boarded the flight in Addis Ababa. Out of the 175 passengers and crew members, 125 met a tragic end, including the hijackers. As outlined in the accident report, the six surviving crew members and 38 passengers sustained serious injuries. Two passengers escaped with minor injuries, and astonishingly, four passengers walked away unscathed. Among the victims was one child, an Ethiopian, who was listed on the manifest. A significant number of passengers survived the initial crash, but a critical misunderstanding or disregard of Captain Lloyd's warning about inflating life jackets inside the aircraft sealed their fate. As water flooded the fuselage, inflated life jackets pushed passengers against the ceiling, trapping them. Unable to escape, an estimated 60 to 80 passengers, still strapped to their seats, presumably drowned. Captain Lloyd and First Officer Jonas, both survivors, were recognized for their heroic actions amid the crisis. Loyal was honored with the Flight Safety Foundation Professionalism in Flight Safety Award, a testament to his courage and quick thinking. The tragic outcome of the crash was a stark reminder of the importance of understanding safety instructions during flights. The story of Eaton 961, though heart-wrenching, underscores the importance of adhering to safety procedures and the potential consequences of neglecting them. It's a sobering reminder that safety is not just in the hands of the crew, but also in the understanding and actions of every passenger on board. Among the passengers of ET-961, some were notable for their professions and actions during the hijacking. A profound loss was felt with the death of wartime photojournalist Mohammed Amin. Amin was not just renowned for his remarkable work in the field, but also as the publisher of Salamta, Ethiopian Airlines in-flight magazine. It's believed that in the final moments of the flight, 
He was near the cockpit entrance, perhaps negotiating with the hijacker guarding it. On a brighter note, Franklin Huddle, the US Consul General of Bombay at the time, and his wife both survived the crash. Huddle had chosen Ethiopian Airlines for a safari trip to Kenya, swayed by the airline's reputation and its Federal Aviation Administration certification. He attributed their survival to a fortuitous upgrade to business class. These stories of survival and loss add a deeply personal aspect to the tragic event. The ripple effects of the crash of ET-961 were felt far and wide. As the world grappled with the enormity of what had transpired, people came together to mourn, remember and find solace. A poignant memorial service was held in Galawa on the 30th of November 1996, uniting those in grief and offering some semblance of closure to the bereaved. In the midst of this tragic event, tales of extraordinary courage emerged. The flight's captain, Luil, and first officer, Jonas, were both recognized for their extraordinary professionalism and valor. Luil was bestowed with the prestigious Flight Safety Foundation Professionalism in Flight Safety Award, a testament to his unwavering commitment to his duty, even in the face of grave danger. Yet, amid the accolades, Loyal was quick to shine the spotlight on Jonas, his first officer. Despite being bruised and bleeding, Jonas bravely fought off the hijackers, buying precious time for Loyal to execute the water landing. In Loyal's words, Jonas was a lifesaver. The incident left a profound impact on Ethiopian airlines, but it did not deter their resolve. Both Loyal and Jonas continued to serve the airline embodying the resilience and strength that had come to define the spirit of the company. Their heroism was not only a testament to their personal bravery, but also a reflection of the airline's commitment to safety and service. The aftermath of ET-961 was not just about the tragedy, but also about the human spirit's capacity to endure overcome and inspire. The actions of the flight's crew, especially Jonas, serve as a stark reminder of the power of courage and resilience in the face of adversity. They stand as a beacon of hope and bravery that continues to inspire us all. Despite the tragedy, the heroism displayed by the crew, especially the first officer, remains a beacon of hope and bravery. The crash of ET-961 did not go unnoticed by the media. In fact, it has been extensively covered in various television programs. One of the most notable is the series known as Mayday, a documentary-style show dedicated to investigating air disasters. The crash of ET-961 was prominently featured in the 12th episode of its third season, aptly titled Ocean Landing. This episode delves into the details of the hijacking, the subsequent water landing, and the heroism displayed by the crew. Another program that highlighted the incident is the biography channel series, I Survived. In a poignant 2010 episode, a survivor from the ill-fated flight shared his harrowing experience, giving viewers a first-hand account of the terrifying ordeal. These media portrayals have not only brought the tale of ET-961 to the public eye, but also underscored the dire consequences of hijackings and the importance of flight safety. The media coverage of ET-961 serves as a grim reminder of the importance of flight safety and the potential heroism in face of adversity.